So let's go back to the Region Appeal case study. What we're going to do is take out of the document the essence of the strategic intent. Now again, this is just an example that I have created and doesn't represent what the Region of Peel has actually done. So if we go to the core document with the vision, mission, and goals, we should be able to begin using those four perspectives to describe success. So in the case of the Region of Peel, they've decided to put stakeholder at the top, finance is a second because they still have to collect taxes and so forth, and then uh, internal and finally enablers. So we should be able to take a look at each of these documents and uh, pull out of it what is the essence of this organization. So there are objectives uh, in here that talk about things like promoting partnerships for the private sector, developing and improving our business practices internally, uh, providing responsive services to our constituents, provide balance in our financial and social responsibilities, and creating a culture of service excellence. And if we drill into some of the detail, there are a couple of other um, objectives which are important. Now, it's important to note that if I take a look at that full strategy document, there's about 240 strategic objectives which are outlined. Now, although the organization needs to achieve 240, if we're building this top-level strategy map, we only have to group those into the top 10 or 15 strategic objective categories. As we cascade the strategy map down to different departments and responsibilities, eventually we'll cover all 240, but we don't need it on a single dashboard or scorecard. And I say dashboard because if you think of the dashboard of your car, uh, there's, your car is a very complex piece of technology. In fact, there's more technology in your car today than there was in the Apollo spaceships that went to the moon. The difference is we can run our cars with two or three dials, whereas the astronauts needed many, many more. The core reason for that, of course, is a risk of failure, right? If the spaceship breaks down, you need to be the garage and the navigation system and everything else with you. Whereas with your car, you can always ask for directions. You can take it to the garage where they do the more detailed diagnostics. And when they do the detailed diagnostics, they have access to all the stuff the astronauts had. The same thing in your organization. We're going to build a simple top-level scorecard or dashboard, and as you cascade it down, the additional detail will be available to the leadership team in those cascaded views of each department or uh, service delivery mechanism. We don't need all 240 dials on the leadership uh, scorecard. So on the right of this screen, we've listed off what I think are some of the core objectives. The next step is to organize them by category. So, for example, if I take a look at um, some of these objectives, for example, uh, promote responsive services, that's something our stakeholders would expect from us. Uh, enhancing community participation is also something our stakeholders expect from the government. Um, if I take a look at things like balancing physical and social responsibilities, that's a financial objective. So we can gradually take all these strategic objectives and organize them by perspective. Again, there's not a hard science to this, but it's indicative of where the value streams uh, exist. The next step is to begin showing the cause and effect relationship between these objectives. So, for example, to provide responsive services, there are three things that uh, this community needs to do. Uh, thing one is we need to... Um, influence policies and services. If we're able to influence uh, the policies and regulations that we have to live within, that will better enable us to be responsive. Uh, if legislation expects us to do things that we're not capable of, this is going to impede our ability to be responsive. Uh, secondly, we obviously have to balance those uh, fiscal and social responsibilities. And then thirdly, we need to enhance community participation. So our theory is this objective can only be achieved if we achieve success in each of these three. Now, these cause and effect relationships are important because they begin to describe a council's model of success or the leader's model of success in your organization so that people understand why they're doing the things we do. So, for example, we're enhancing community participation, not for fun, but rather in aid of making sure that what we do is more responsive. And this almost becomes a test towards what things we should do around participation, which will aid being more responsive in how we deliver. 
A great example of this is the work that we did for Los Angeles Social Services, uh, where they began partnering with local schools to provide soup kitchens to help the homeless. Uh, This way they could leverage off existing assets the cafeterias in the schools, rather than seeking finances to build new kitchens, which in fact would be idle while the schools are active and active while the schools are idle. Uh, This participation with the schools led some of the schools to provide uh, culinary courses and so on, and the students would actually uh, cook for the the homeless. Um, And eventually they began partnering with private sector and using the cafeterias and the office towers for the downtown homeless people, and in fact began using the executives to be working in those soup kitchens to help train those executives how to lead by influence as opposed to authority. So everyone wins. The organization gets some development opportunities for the executives. They leverage off their assets and get tax relief for that. And the homeless get fed. Interesting partnerships. But these objectives tell us what the outcome is, not how to get there. It depends on the creativity, the accountability of people to achieve those things. So as we continue building up the arrows, we can gradually explain to the organization why it is we do the things we do and how we hope it will lead to success. So in this case, we would say that overall we want to provide responsive services. To do that, we have to influence policy, balance physical and social responsibilities, and enhance community participation. How do we enhance community participation? Well, we need to make sure that we promote partnerships. And by the way, if we promote partnerships, not only will that enhance the community participation, but it'll help us also help us develop and improve our business practices, which have the twofold benefits of helping us obviously maximize revenue by providing the things taxpayers want and have them pay taxes for those services, and second, allow us to balance our financial and social responsibilities. Um, underpinning everything is you know, attracting and retaining the right people, making sure that we create this culture of service excellence, in this case, uh, leveraging technology. So that's their strategy map, capturing the core essence of their strategic intent, the sort of the top level view of those 240 objectives.